Hello everybody, my name is Maya. I am a third year life science psychology student at the University of Waterloo. I selected this program after being at Waterloo for a year or so. Originally I was a biomedical science student and then I transferred over to life science psychology and I did this because of the pros. The life science psychology program is a mixture between science in psychology, just as the name suggests, which basically just means that I get to do the parts of science that I enjoy, that being biology, physiology, and everything to do with the human body, as well as take a lot of psychology courses. And to me, this was the most interesting pre-med option out there. Another reason why this program is actually perfect for me is I am deciding between going to med school and going to graduate school, specifically looking at a master's or a PhD in some sort of psychology program. And this degree really allows me to do that. If I would have stayed in biomedical science, for example, I wouldn't have been able to go to grad school. And so this option really gives me two paths to go down, which I really, really appreciate. The only con that I can really think of is that there isn't much room for electives, and that's because you're really doing a science degree with all your electives being psychologies. And if you're not into psychology classes, you can't really go and do other disciplines. There is some room for some courses, however, you're not going to be able to do a minor per se. One of my favorite things about my program is how amazing the professors are. My favorite part of psychology is actually social psychology and it's a pretty new field and because it's so new there aren't a lot of universities that have professors that have been in that field for a really long time but Waterloo does. Waterloo is one of the first universities in Canada to really study social psychology and because of that, we have profs that have either been around since the very beginning or have studied under some of the most influential social psychologists ever. My social psychology prof in first year was actually taught Psych 101 by Philip Zimbardo, who was the professor who came about creating the Stanford Prison Experiment. And if you haven't heard of that, it is one of the most famous psychological experiments to, I think, ever have been run. And it was really cool to have a professor who has been that close to like I don't want to say like scientific royalty or like at least a really famous person within psychology. So I thought that was really cool. And when I did make that switch between biomedical science and life science psychology, I really saw the switch between the different cultures that are at Waterloo. When you're in the science faculty, it is very, very competitive. But I found life science psychology was one of the areas that it's more helpful rather than competitive, just because you are surrounded by a lot of arts students as well. And I do find that art students are a lot less competitive than science students. And this way you can get a science degree, you can take the courses you want, but you are surrounded by more helpful and happy and cheerful people and professors. So the program is a mixture between lectures and labs. It really depends if you're in a psychology course or if you are in a science course. Science courses typically do have a lab component. There are more labs within first and second year and they kind of slow down, at least from my experience, and then it becomes more lecture based, but the lab is a very good place to get that hands-on experience. Psychology courses are typically very test heavy, which means they're very fast paced. You are always studying for one midterm or the next. For example, a lot of my psychology courses actually have four exams rather than any assignments or even just a big final. They do have four tests, which means every two to three weeks you are writing a midterm. And when you have four or five courses that are structured this way, it means you have multiple exams every single week. So it is definitely fast paced and you don't want to get behind. I would say for skill set that you really do need to have to be successful in this program is you need to be able to see the big picture. I find that most exams are multiple choice, but multiple choice doesn't mean easy. And really what you have to do is be able to look at all the concepts that you learned and be able to link them both to each other, to different lectures, to different topics completely and even to the real world. And so it's really about making those connections for yourself so that you're prepared on test day to make them as well. And to prepare for exams in this style, I really do like to use mind maps. So if you are going into a program that's this one or similar, you do want to practice making mind maps, practice really finding those connections, and that is how you can be successful. 
One thing I would have really liked to know before I did my university applications is I would have liked someone to tell me to look into the programs a lot deeper than I really did. I definitely read the descriptions, but more than that, you want to look at what courses you have to take in your upper years. And this is because the first couple of years are going to be very, very general, and it's not until third or fourth year that you're really gonna see what that program is like. And so I applied to biomedical science because I wanted to be a doctor, I wanted to go to med school, which to me meant I have to do biology, chemistry, and physics. I did that first year and I did not enjoy it. And then I started to look into, okay, what do I have to do in third and fourth year? And it was things like microbiology and immunology, which I did find interesting, but from experience, I knew that I wasn't gonna do as well as I needed to in those types of courses. However, if I would have looked into life science psychology, I would have seen that you get to take things like anatomy and physiology, which are the courses I really, really love, but you also get to take really interesting courses like the psychology of death and dying, the psychology of evil, the psychology of good, the psychology of pro-social behavior. And those are all things that definitely in first year I looked into and thought, wow, I really want to do that. And I didn't really want to do all of the biologies and chemistries that I would have had to do in my other degree. Obviously you can switch your degree once you're in. I did. I am proof that that is totally fine to do. I'm not going to have to do extra years or courses or anything like that. But it's obviously better to choose the right program the first time around. As for the application process, I did have to go to the University of Waterloo website because technically I did not apply for this specific program. And it does say that you need low 80s to get into the life science program at Waterloo. From my experience though, to be competitive, you wanna be high 80s to low 90s and that should almost guarantee your spot in this program. There isn't any additional application at all. There's no forms or anything like that. And the website did say that you need calculus, advanced functions, and English grades to be above 70% for sure. As for scholarships, the University of Waterloo does have entrance awards that you are eligible for and you will automatically be enrolled to get if you have a certain average in your high school grades. And so those ones are really, really easy because you don't need to do any additional applications. Once you get to campus, you do have to fill out additional forms if you're looking for like the bigger scholarships or anything like that. Those do require an additional form and I believe you just fill it out once and then they have you in the system and you're automatically considered for all of the bigger awards each year. As for jobs that you can get with this degree, it is a Bachelor of Science. So you can kind of do whatever you can do with any Bachelor of Science. So I'd say that most people are gonna go on to grad school, whether that be med school or a master's or PhD in a research field, but also within psychology. And this would also apply to anybody who wants to be a psychologist. You would have to go on to do a clinical psychology PhD, and then you would be able to call yourself a psychologist in Ontario. If you didn't want to do more school and you didn't want to work within psychology, you could be a psychometric, which is a job I didn't know existed before my degree, but it's basically the person who administers psychological tests for psychologists, psychiatrists, social workers, or anybody who is in therapy that needs a test done. So for example, an IQ test might be administered by a psychometric, which technically you only need a post-secondary degree in psychology to do, and then there's on-the-job training. And there is a co-op program associated with this degree. You do not have to take it. I am not in the co-op program, so I don't exactly know how it works. I do know that you don't really have a summer because you usually have school for two terms and then you work for the other term and then that isn't necessarily the summer term. But I do know it's super, super busy, but out of the people that do take the co-op program or are in the co-op program, they do really, really enjoy it. As for courses, I would recommend taking Biology 302, which is Functional Histology. And I say this because I'm in the course now. I'm a third year student and I wish I would have taken it earlier. It is not that difficult. I mean, you definitely have to put in the work, but it really helps you with other courses because it's showing you how to look at 
histology, how to look at things under a microscope and really be able to differentiate different parts of the body and different, you know, tissue cells, everything like that. And so it is really, really useful and a fun course. So I would recommend that one. As for high school courses, any science course is really going to be helpful here. I think no matter what science program you're in at the University of Waterloo, you do have to take introductory biology, chemistry, sometimes physics as well, as well as sometimes calculus. So you do want to have all of those as background because it is very, very helpful. So you do want to take your grade 11 and 12 physics, chemistry, biology, and the calculus and advanced functions and everything like that, because you want to not be absolutely shocked when you enter first year. Most terms I have a full course load, which is five courses at the University of Waterloo. However, this doesn't include labs, which technically are a separate course on campus. And so for those terms, when I do have labs, I have had up to eight courses technically, but three of those being labs, which is really, really, really busy, but it's doable. But I would aim for that five course load plus any additional labs that you do need to take. And how I choose electives, I should say, is I use something called UW Flow. And it's a really, really interesting website where you're going to see student reviews of various courses and professors. And it really goes into difficulty level, um, interest level, everything like that. So it really helps you choose the right course for you. I study a lot for my program. Um, midterms are very hard and that's something that not a lot of high school students know going into it and they also assume that multiple choice means it's easy because in high school it was. In university that isn't the case, at least at the University of Waterloo, and so you need to prepare for hard multiple choice midterms. What I do is I create flashcards as I encounter new terms and I do not wait until study period to do this. I really do it as they come. I also create mind maps as I have mentioned. That is super, super, super important. I think anyway. And I also really start studying early. I usually start studying about a week before my midterm and really get in at least two to three hours per day. For finals, I like to start studying two or even three weeks before my final because they are usually very heavily weighted and usually cumulative, which means it covers everything. So that's a lot of information to know. I did live on campus first year. I will say that the resident buildings are pretty old, pretty dark, but I will say that I was in a suite style, which was absolutely perfect for me. And that meant that I shared a kitchen and a bathroom and a living room with three other girls, but we all had our own separate bedrooms, which was really, really important to me because one, I didn't want to share a bathroom with hundreds of people. And I also really wanted my own room, but I wanted to still be social. And so this was the perfect option for me. If you are looking for housing outside of campus, there are two options for you. You can either be super, super close as in like walking distance or just a short bus ride from campus. If you want to do that, you want to look really, really early. I ended up living really close to campus in second year and I started looking in first year in around December and January and really signed my lease, I think in February. Um, and that was pretty late. So if you want to live close, you got to get in early. There isn't a lot of options for students. Secondly, if you want to live a little bit further away, right now I actually live about 20 minutes from campus, which is perfect during COVID because I don't have to go anywhere. And I did this because it's cheaper. There's more options and I ended up actually just signing a lease the month before my lease started, which is more typical to what you would do if you were just, you know, getting an apartment. However, the application process takes longer and you actually have to be selected for your apartment, whereas student living is, is very different and you, often very easy as long as you have a parent to co-sign. As for party culture on the campus, there is pretty much none. However, we are a couple blocks from Laurier, which does have a big party culture, so you can definitely still party if you want to. It just probably won't be on campus. There are some parties, but they're harder to find than a lot of other schools. What's really nice about Waterloo is that pretty much every building has study areas, so people are very dispersed. There are obviously a lot of people in libraries and bigger study areas, and we have like a student life center that's always pretty busy, but other than that, you can find a lot of places to sit, to talk with your friends, but also to study and get things done. 
The best place to make friends at Waterloo is through your science lab, specifically in this program. Labs require you to pick a partner, and so obviously you're gonna get close to that person, and it's probably the best way to make friends other than residents. There are some free mental health resources available at Waterloo. We do have a counseling center, I believe it's called the Student Wellness Center, that does offer free one-on-one -on -one counseling. When we were on campus, it was in person and everything's confidential and everything like that. Now I believe it's over the phone, which it's still free, it's still confidential, which is a really great resource. We also have some career resources that I know are for free as well. They'll help you build a resume, they'll even give you some free workshops, everything like that. So that's really cool too. I would really suggest to my first year self to use a calendar that is so, so, so important. Organization is everything when you go to university. And so my calendar was like my best friend. It told me everything I needed to do. And I would also recommend scheduling in your study time, which may sound a little weird, but if you schedule it into your calendar and you treat it as if you were going to class or like doing something you needed to do from one to three, you will actually study a lot more than if you just, you know, tell yourself you'll study whenever you're free time. So yeah, I definitely recommend using a calendar and scheduling everything. As for self-care, mental health tips, I will say that university is really, really hard. It's really challenging to get everything done and can be incredibly overwhelming. So it is so important that you take breaks, you take care of yourself because it's much better that you get a worse grade on a midterm or not hand in an assignment than be so burnt out that you can't even finish the semester. If you're looking for more mental health tips, I do actually have a YouTube channel about students, about psychology, and about mental health. And if you are looking for more tips, my channel will be linked above and below. I definitely urge you to check that out if you're really looking to figure out how to survive university a little bit. Um, hopefully I can help out with that. And that is it for me. Thanks for watching this video and good luck with your schooling. You will definitely get through it. It will be a challenge, but it'll be one you're really, really proud of at the end. Okay, bye.